Quad C6. Welcome back to the couch. I'm doing a little update slash review. The update is on the build, and then the review is on the board. So as far as the build goes, um, the update, this build was the one I was trying to go with like really light. I was trying to get to see just how light I could do, um, could get it. And I was really excited about this new drone board because it is a five in one. Um, so the VTX is built in, the receiver is built in. And this particular one is the racer edition, which is what I'm showing you here, which came with no USB, no motor plugs. And the USB is actually this little janky setup where you go ahead and just um, hold that on the quad as you're updating and stuff like that. With that USB saves, you know, having it not on there saves um, two tenths of a gram, 0.2 grams. So depending what you're after, maybe that's something for you. And for me on this bill, that was something I found was really interesting. I was, you know, appreciative of Kelvin sell, sent me over one of these boards. I'm, I don't know if they plan on selling it because that's pretty janky to sell, like saying, hey, you just got to hold this thing in place. Um, but I have gotten, so what have I done on this build? So when I first built it up, I built it up with the Runcam Nano 3 camera. And for the VTX antenna, you can see I have a regular dipole. I had just, I just um, stripped some wire to the right length and had just a little wire. And after flying it for a while, the camera had to go right away. It didn't have enough field of view. So I took the hit and put the Newbie Drone BI camera on there. And after a while, I kind of got sick of the VTX being, it was flyable, but it wasn't enjoyable. And so I put the regular dipole back on and it brought things back up. The BI camera in particular is a little bit heavier than the usual camera I use, which is the, the 199C. This 199C camera, it's a little bit less tall and it's like, I don't know, it's like 0.1 or 0.2 grams lighter, but with the Noob Drone BI camera, you can plug it straight in. And that has been just such a convenient thing for me when I've been rebuilding this, kind of pulling stuff off. To be able to unplug it, have this all nice and exposed, and not have a camera dangling while I'm changing motors and things like that. It was really, really nice, and I think it's just overall worthwhile um, having that little slight weight penalty there. The motors, I tried some things. So I was having a little bit of problems with this quad on my low end throttle resolution. When I'm just above hover, I tried some lower KV. So these motors are the Weebleed FPV 26,500. And I tried dropping it down to a 23,000 KV motor. And that did help a little bit on the low end kind of throttle resolution. But I think it's more the prop coming in and out of the power band. I was thinking maybe it's the motor coming in and out of the power band, but it's more the prop. and so. At the end of the day, I put the higher KV back on just because it just feels like a more lively, more fun uh, quad to fly. Um, with that said, these motors just fly so well. These Noby Drone 0702 bearing motors. It's unfortunate that there's such a flight time penalty because these motors um, are really nice, really enjoyable to fly. But at the end of the day, they're the Noob Drone motors are heavier, less efficient, and for what this quad is supposed to be, I think the Happy Model, um, you know, and in this case the rebranded we Weebleed FPV motor just makes more sense. Um, I am flying it on a PH2. Put your PH2 heat in the comments below. Um, performance wise, I'm not going to get it. I, I don't think the BT2 is the wrong connector on this build, even on this build, even though we're thinking about weight. But with the extra weight that I put on, we went from a sub 16, it was barely just sub 16, it was like 15.9 grams. And now with the weight we put on, we are just under 17 grams. So now it's 16.9 grams. That's still a weight savings though, compared to this quad. So this is built up with the same frame. It's the new drone frame, but it's got the beta FPV cross four um, where you have to solder the VTX. And I just, don't want to deal with that anymore. The only the only thing I have with the newbie drone board, where I'm where I can't give it like a five star sort of recommendation really, is just it doesn't have black box built in. That for me is a little bit of a thing where I really wish I had black box to kind of really fine tune it, especially when using these happy model motors. There's there's noise, and I'm going to show you the problems that that causes with bump tolerance, or at least I'm going to try and show you. But basically, 
the closer, the more edgy the tune is, the worse the bump tolerance is. It's like when it's edgy and you and you flick the frame, it then resonates. And so that's actually one of the bigger issues um, that I'm seeing with these motors versus the smoother newbie drum motors. But at the end of the day, between these two builds, um, largely from the integrated all-in-one, I'm saving about a gram of weight. Uh, some of that weight savings is in the motor, but then you give it a little bit back on the camera, so call that a net um, trade-off. So really going from the five-in-one, the benefit of the five-in-one is really you're picking up about a gram of weight savings, which is, which is pretty nice. The frame's been holding up really well. It's doing really well for me. I haven't bent it, warped it or anything. It's protecting the props really well. Um, you know, with this bump tolerance and the edginess of the tune, yeah, a frame that quiets the noise down better is probably going to have a little better bump tolerance. But at the end of the day, there's so many trade offs you can make and you got to settle on something. So I'm going to put some packs through this and I'll show you um, kind of fly, fly some back and forth. I'll show you what this is capable of with me flying. I'm sure a better pilot could show you even more out of it. So let's get a battery in here. I'm going to start off with the 250 cell. So you'll see flight time. So this is on the smaller uh, 250 battery. So this stuff right in here is where I was trying to go with that um, lower KV motor to get slightly better um, throttle resolution. And I didn't it made some difference, but not enough to like where I was satisfied with it. Go back to my dog, kind of buzzing her. She's got the cone of shame. She's old and she's been licking at some stuff and making hot spots. So she's got the cone of shame and a t-shirt on. So that right there, that was a good example. With this quad, that was a pretty mild bump. Yeah, it's a hard surface. But I did get a fair bit of like flip out from the quad. That was actually a better example right there. So that was a good example. I think that's of one of the problems with this build. Um, and I say build because you could mitigate it from several ways. One is you could put smoother motors on and it'd have better bump resistance because the motor's putting um, less noise into the system. You could also mitigate it by going to a frame that quiets the noise down. And that again would improve the bump resistance. But in terms of in either of those cases, we're going to then make trade-offs. So if we go to the uh, Beta FPV meter 65 frame, you're going to be adding a little bit of weight and you're also going to have uh, not as good prop protection because of the way the ducts are kind of set up and stuff like that. Um, or you can go to the new drone. Oh man. Seriously, not flying well. That's fine. Um, so you could do some things to get better um, bump protection and, and it would just you know, it would tolerate it more. And I'll show you on the other quad how, um, I, you know, we'll see if we kind of just naturally bump into stuff and show you a little bit of difference in terms of how it tolerates it better. Kind of took a little pause in talking right there so I can maybe concentrate a little better and give you a little better flight experience. Um, video isn't quite as good as it would be. Um, my son is on his Oculus, which I figured out is a massive um, noise generator in the VTX. But I think the VTX, um, the video on the laptop should be better now. I put a better, um, put a better antenna on it. And then also on here, as I said, I'm using the regular dipole um, instead of just that 
little wire. But this is sort of my typical flying that I'm doing here. I kind of like just doing my little organic race course sort of thing. I'm not super huge on um, indoor freestyle. I like freestyling outdoors. I don't know, it's just, just how I like to fly. But I think this will give you a sense of the flight time and the performance on the 250 battery. You can see we're going to be starting to get down towards the tail end of the battery here. But, you know, making it out past four minutes, I'm going to land that. That's going to be done right there. Let's see where it rebounds, 3.55. So, you know, four, there's a little bit of downtime there. Obviously with the, with the crashes and stuff. So you can take a few seconds off that flight time. So now we'll do... 300 cell. Kind of show you the flight time there. Um, I had very much intended this build to to be um, flown on the 250s on the lighter cell, but as I kind of mentioned, I think these props kind of go a little bit in and out of their power band at the bottom of the you know when you're just kind of at hover. And so a little extra weight, although I don't like carrying that extra weight um, in terms of like cornering and punch out and stuff like that, it actually works a little in your favor down through here because you have enough weight to stay a little bit clear in the power band. So um, I don't know whether I like flying this better on the 250 or the 300. I'm kind of torn on it a little bit. I think definitely if you're flying freestyle, I think, well, I can't say that because that was just me shutting off the brain for a minute there. Um, I just kind of assume with three, freestyle you want a little bit more throw and stuff like that. And so in that regard, I think the 300 will be your friend. I don't know if the 300 helps any with the bump tolerance. It may freak out a little bit less. Oh, by the way, too, I pulled this. Um, one of the things I've been experimenting with is detuning it a little bit to get a little. Wow. Fucking awful. Awful fun, though. Seriously. Uh, I've been playing with like kind of detuning a little bit the, uh, to try and get it a little bit more on tons, basically getting the tune off the edge a little bit. And it does work, but you really got to like detune it quite a bit. And so I'm not sure where I'd personally stand on like what's the better way to go. Because, what are you stuck on, seriously? I think that's a good example though, where you can see just how edgy this tune is, right? So, we're just like bouncing along and we can't even get it to settle down there. But with these little micros, um, unless you have a super clean build, uh, it's gonna you're gonna have to be pretty edgy to get it to fly well at least the way I like the quad to respond and for it to follow set point Man. So um, On this 300 cell, you know, we can see that we are at three minutes already uh, we still have a decent amount of voltage here. And so typically what I'm finding is on the 250, I can pretty easily get four minutes. And then on the 300, 
you know, we're looking more for like a closer to five minute flight time. On the 23, on the lower KV, the 23,000, oh on the 23,000 KV, that's even better. So um, 23,000 KV, I was getting almost getting close to five minutes um, on the 250, like 440, 445. And then on the 300, um, on the 300, I was getting like easily over five minutes. It's a really nice, really nice flight time. And I'm seeing all this. I bet you this VTX looks terrible on the computer, which is unfortunate. And half of that is going to be that Oculus. Because I was just flying this like an hour ago when Ryder wasn't home and he wasn't on his Oculus. And the VTX looked. Not that it, the picture didn't look a ton better. It just didn't have all these like little interference lines across it. Alright, so 4, 440. 453. This battery is going to be on the 300s. This does fall off the cliff uh, versus the 250s. You have a little bit more warning just because the 300 doesn't really sag much. So I'm going to pull that in. Let's see where that settles out. 3.53. Yeah. So over five minutes. Um, you saw how I was flying. You know, it's not crazy, but it was getting after a little bit. All right, so that's what I got for review of the Hummingbird V3 and update on this build. It's now, you know, it is what it is. It's a um, just, you know, 16.9 gram build, dry weight. Um, so not as impressive on the scale, but a lot more fun to fly. All right, until next time, cheers.